I had the blessing of visiting Brother Albert Woodfox and Brother Herman Wallace uh, several years ago. As a matter of fact, it was in 2008 in Angola Prison, which is in Louisiana, where these brothers have been locked down for more than 40 years. Almost all of that time has been spent in solitary confinement. My mind was completely blown when I met them and, and saw that they still had their humor, you know, they still felt strong and they just radiated that strength. After being locked down all that time, we talked about a book that has been written about uh, Brother Herman and his visions of how the house would be, his home would be when he's finally released from prison. And the book is called Herman's House. I incorporated some of those images in the words of this poem and the memories of that day of visiting those brothers is expressed through the wire. I heard the tambourine tinkle of the shackles before my eyes even met their faces. One with the cool, calm demeanor of Malcolm, the other with the bob and weave energy of Ali. I was astonished by their ramrod stature as they crouched with backs to that slit in the doorway in easy grace and zen composure, in a dance-like practice motion that served for easier release of the cold, steel handcuffs binding them? Or was that still hot and fiery, powering and releasing electrified surges of Shango energy to pumped up cut muscles and solar-powered minds and to fingers leaving sweat trails of wisdom on dog-eared law books, searching for that that others might have missed. And their strength shone through the heavy mesh wire separating us, wire that achieved the exact opposite of intended purpose, failing to dim the brilliance of their spirits as they stood there let loose from their bonds, tall and relaxed and smiling and greeting, that changed that tiny walled space of confinement into an airy room, a living room, a sitting room, a front room or whatever you'd like to call it, filled with light and ferns and fragrant incense and herb smoke and crowded bookshelves and internet ping and soft jazz purring and wet splashes of laughter out by the pool with its panther tile bottom. The prison doors seem open and wide and surely I felt at any moment wooden trays full of hot tea and fresh brewed coffee or maybe mango juice with crushed ice and mint leaves would appear to refresh our palates and dampen the light sweat on our fingertips that touched and scraped at that wire. And meanwhile, we stumble and bump into each other's words and enjoyment of the four-way conversation, nicking and flecking and cutting right through years of not knowing each other, but knowing still, and acknowledging and making real that notion that a panther meets no stranger down paths of shared existence, only brother, sister, comrades, and universe, and a unique sameness under it all. And the wire opens like soft paper flower petals, bright with visions of dusty roads and crackling cornfields and migrating animal feet and parting clouds off Kilimanjaro that we, Pete and me, see with our eyes through their dreams, through our eyes, visions that had been kept jarred up tightly for years. 
and they, Herman and Albert, screw the lid off slowly, finally, themselves, at last catching the sharp, pungent aroma of three decades of bottled up dreams and tamped down tears and plumped up hope and wild, wet laughter, <laughs> finally released with a rocket engine, whoosh, of freedom flying right out that heavy metal wire. And the wire becomes a curtain woven of hand corded salt fleece, snagging and unraveling slowly, carefully, untangling nightmares of confinement, unraveling, undoing, and it moves lightly, that curtain, and sways and shivers under the force of their dreams of freedom realized at last. Ashe. Yeah, wow. Yes. Ashe. Yeah.